Hi, thanks for coming to view my talk today. When you look at this scene, what do you see? I see around a dozen people. A mix of ages, facial expressions, and postures, arranged in a particular way with each person holding on to two others. Another way of answering that question is to make a picture like this, which abstracts away most of the information in the scene, such as the identities of the people, while preserving information about who is holding on to whom. Or even more extreme, a drawing like this, which abstracts away the people altogether, but preserves the topology of the knot they made. Both the first drawing and this one can be thought of as representing the same information, and yet they look quite different and can be useful for different purposes. Our goal in this project is to understand how the human mind is flexible enough to pull off these feats of visual abstraction, to effectively communicate what we see and know in visual form. Even in the relatively simple case of drawing a cat, we can do so in lots of different ways, spanning a large range of abstraction, from simple sketches to detailed drawings to highly photorealistic renderings. What underlying cognitive mechanisms explain how and why we produce such varied drawings? So a recent study by Fan and colleagues explored the subject of communicative context on the type of drawings people produce. In this study, pairs of participants were each shown a set of four objects. One of the participants, the sketcher, aimed to draw one of these objects such that the second participant, the viewer, could identify which object was the target. They operationalized context by manipulating the similarity between the target and the other three distractor objects. On close trials, all of these objects belong to the same basic level category, encouraging the production of drawings that were diagnostic at the exemplar level. On far trials, the objects belong to different categories, letting participants get away with sparser drawings that only need to be identifiable at the category level. They found that people systematically exploited information in context to produce more detailed drawings on close trials and more abstract drawings on far trials. And while that study provided initial insights into how task context and goals can impact the types of drawings that people produce, in all cases, participants were just cued with a photorealistic image of that target object. So it isn't really clear how the simple fact that the image was present impacted how people drew. After all, People don't need to be staring at a high-resolution picture of a cat when playing Pictionary to successfully communicate the idea of a cat. How different are these Pictionary drawings from the ones they make when they have a photo of cat in front of them? Well, to answer this question, we conducted an experiment to test the hypothesis that both visual inputs and representational goals can substantially impact the semantic information that people encode in their drawings leading to drawings that are more perceptually grounded and convey more specific meaning when they are trying to draw a specific object they are viewing, and drawings that are more schematic and abstract when they must rely exclusively on long-term semantic knowledge to convey more generic meanings. We recruited participants online to perform a simple drawing task. In one of these groups, they were first cued with a color photo and then they were asked to draw that exemplar. To measure the impact of having different representational goals, a second group of participants was instead instructed to draw a generic bird that only needed to be recognizable at the category level, using the photo cue only as a reminder of what, for example, birds look like in general. To measure the impact of having a photo available, we recruited a third group of participants who were cued only with the category label bird, but still had the same goal of drawing a particular exemplar. And finally, to, compute our two, to complete our 2x2 two two design, the fourth group was cued with a label, and they were asked to produce a generic drawing of the category. To give you a sense of what the test looked like from the participant's perspective, here is a demo of a single trial from the photo queue exemplar goal condition. To clarify, of course, Pikachu wasn't actually one of the concepts in the stimulus set. 
To cover a wide array of the visual object concepts, we included 32 categories that were roughly balanced with respect to animacy, size, familiarity, and whether or not the objects were artificial. Within each of these categories, we included 32 images that were selected to vary with respect to both the category or orthogonal properties, such as their pose and viewpoints, as well as category relevant properties, for example, how typical the exemplar was. Here's a subset of what the raw data looked like. The top row shows some of the images of butterflies we used as cues. Below, are examples of butterfly drawings from each of our four conditions. Based on prior work by Fan and colleagues, we predicted that exemplar drawings would be more detailed than category drawings when participants were shown a photo cue. And indeed, this is what we found. Exemplar drawings reliably consisted of more pen strokes than category drawings, consistent with the prior work. New in our experiment were the matched label cube conditions, in which participants use slightly fewer strokes relative to the photo cube drawings. However, we found the same effective representational goal in detail overall. These results essentially give us a manipulation check that a basic physical property of these drawings, how many strokes they consist of, differ across conditions. But what we're really interested in is the semantic information contained within these drawings. To measure what kind of semantic information they contained, we leveraged prior work validating the use of deep convolutional, ne convolutional neural networks to extract high-level perceptual feature vectors from each drawing. We operationalized the semantic information in each sketch as the amount of evidence for the target concept that was contained in the drawing. To estimate this, we used our feature vectors to fit a 32-way logistic regression-based classifier, trained via a five-fold cross-validation to return a probability value representing how much evidence there was for the target concept, as opposed to the remaining 31 concepts. Using these probability values, we computed a log-odds ratio, which is what appears in the y-axis in the right-hand plot. So one reasonable prediction to have is that the highest category evidence might be found for the photo cue drawings of exemplars, since these are richer in information overall, and they are the most detailed of all the conditions. And instead, we found the opposite. Exemplar drawings made from a photo cue are actually the least categorizable of the bunch, whereas category drawings cued from just a label, despite being sparse and constrained as a condition, were actually the most easily categorized. Drawings from the other two conditions fell somewhere in between, but still had relatively high category evidence, suggesting that something quite different was going on in the photocued exemplar condition. So what might explain these differences in category evidence across conditions? Well, one might expect that across participants, different label cued category drawings contain similar features that are the most diagnostic of a given category. And so maybe this enhanced classifiability is really reflecting some greater systematicity in what people actually find relevant to include in category drawings. By contrast with exemplar drawings cued with photo, which by aiming to capture the idiosyncratic properties of each exemplar, they may have spurred greater variation across drawings, and this might make them more difficult to classify. And so, to measure the idea of variation among drawings, we begin by taking the drawing's high-level feature vector representations. And for each category, we compute the variance over these feature vectors, capturing the average squared Euclidean distance between each pair of drawings in the category. So how variable within categories are sketches in each of these conditions? Here we plot the within-category variance on the y-axis for each of our four conditions on the x-axis. When shown an image, people's drawings were more consistent when drawing categories versus when drawing the specific image they were shown, which suggests that different people tend to include similar features when trying to convey category information compared to the exemplars. 
when participants were shown just the text label, we found a similar, albeit weaker, effective goal. It appears that the content expressed in category drawings is just more consistent than the content expressed in exemplar drawings. And so these results overall suggest that photo cue drawings of exemplars are less easily categorized, and that this may reflect greater variability among these exemplars, owing to their inclusion of idiosyncratic visual features that don't necessarily help diagnose category identity. However, if it is true that what really drives the category evidence in a drawing is how much category diagnostic information it contains, then we predict that, at least among photo cued exemplar drawings, that drawings made from more prototypical cues, like the cats in this top row of the drawing, would contain more category evidence than those cued from more atypical images, like these cats in the bottom row. To test how typicality of photo cue stimuli affected the semantic information contained in drawings, we conducted another study for which each photo in our stimulus set 10 people were shown the image and were asked to how representative each image was of their respective category, giving us estimates of the typicality of each photo. Here, we let the category level evidence of photo cued drawings on the y axis vary across human rated typicality judgments on the x axis. When drawing with the goal to convey category information, typicality didn't explain much variation in category evidence. We should expect this though, since in this condition, participants were specifically instructed to not make their drawings actually look like the object in the photo, but rather it should convey a category concept. But for the exemplar drawings, the more typical the cue, the more category evidence the drawing contained. This suggests that similar visual attributes are diagnostic of category identity in both photos and drawings. So what did we learn about our ability to convey semantic information about drawings across different levels of abstraction? Well, for photo cued exemplar drawings, we found that despite producing the most detailed drawings of all conditions, these exemplar drawings are also the least categorizable. By contrast, we found that label cued category drawings were the least detailed, and yet, for all conditions, they are also the most categorizable. Hypothesizing that this classifiability may be due to some systematicity in drawing features across different people trying to convey category information, we then looked at how variable these drawings in each of the conditions were. And indeed, we found that label queued category drawings displayed the least variability across all conditions supporting this notion of systematicity in abstraction. Finally, we directly tested the notion that category diagnostic features underlie classifiability by exploring how the prototypicality of stimuli in the photo queue affected the classifiability of exemplar drawings, and we found that, yes, the more typical the stimulus, the easier the drawing is to classify. More broadly, our findings suggest that while one might believe that having more information about what an object looks like when trying to draw it may lead to strictly higher quality, more categorizable drawings, it doesn't seem like this is actually the case. Rather, there seems to be strict advantages to visual abstraction, that simpler drawings may just be more fluently processed and categorized by an outside observer and thus more appropriate in settings while conveying while what is generic about that category is what's important, rather than producing the most faithful account of an object possible. Overall, our findings contribute to our understanding of how perceptual processing and task goals affect the way people externalize what they perceive and know about the visual world. I'd like to thank all my colleagues in the lab for their helpful feedback, and I'm happy to answer any questions in the Q&A section and via email. Thank you.